another story that has been trending is the endorsement of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's son, Shei Tinubu, as the next governor of Lagos State by the Coalition of Nigerian Youth Leaders, a group representing youth organizations across Nigeria's six geopolitical zones. The group highlighted Shei Tinubu's potential to build on the foundation laid by his father, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, during his tenure as Lagos State Governor. They praised Tinubu's transformational <laughs> leadership, which elevated Lagos to the center of excellence and expressed confidence that Shei would surpass his father's achievements if elected. <laughs> Dr. Abati, it's great. This statement was okay, issued on very Tuesday. Quickly, well, I'll, I'll try to be yes. brief because we don't have time. Yeah. Well, I mean, the uh, youths of uh, Nigeria, they say they are a coalition. A coalition. Well, they say they have a stake in uh, who becomes next governor of Lagos. Let those youths be reminded that these are the same youths who have been told that if they came from anywhere outside Lagos State, if they don't do what the people of Lagos want, they can jump into the lagoon. <laughs> so, but uh, I don't know what gives them the confidence. Their premises are also suspicious. They are saying that because uh, President Tinubu did well as governor of Lagos, his son too will do well. Mm -hmm. Well, is it by osmosis that you acquire leadership uh, qualities? Uh, that looks very strange to me. They say that it is the time for a young person to be governor of Lagos State. Young people have always uh, you know, been governor of Lagos. Governor Tinumbu, as he then was, was a young man. How old was uh, uh, Baba Tunde Raji Fashola when he was governor? How old was Ambode? How old is uh, Sonwulu that is there? He's still a young man. Mm -hmm. He's not even 60 yet. So that argument also falls flat. The only thing that I see is that they say uh, Shei Tinumbu is very capable, is knowledgeable and all that. Okay, they can say that. They will have to convince us. But we should know that this is not a dynasty. No. This oh. is a democracy. On, really. Nigeria is not Equatoria Guinea. Oh. Nigeria is not Cameroon. Okay. <laughs> if they want to uh, uh, propose uh, Shei Tunumbu, they should do so. Mm -hmm. But he will be assessed on his own merit. That's it. Not on the basis of DNA, <laughs> uh, which we cannot uh, really push. And finally, finally, I think if uh, uh, President Tunumbu wants to make his son, Governor, yeah. this is probably the best time. After all, it's <laughs> Emil Oko. So we can have <laughs> Emil Oko in Abuja <laughs> and also have <laughs> Emil Oko in, in Lagos. I rest my case. All those words that we do respect, also they are speaking, um, it's not a dynasty. It's not a this. They were assessing. They can, it's English you are speaking. You have said it. Your last phrase is, it's Emil Oko. Your Excellency, sir. Welcome to the governorship of Lagos. <laughs> oh, Rodili Baberni. <laughs> you two, you will be it. All this what we are talking. It doesn't matter. Election period, they will come now. Before you know, you are governor. So, yeah. Governor Sheyi Tinubu. <laughs> governor Sheyi Tinubu of Lagos. That's just... You see, we can deceive ourselves so much. You see, I can talk very comically and all, all laughter, but I cry for Nigeria mm -hmm. because that's what Nigeria has become. Is it only Tinubu that is doing it? What are other politicians that have put their children there? Mm -hmm. Why are they talking about one in Edo State that put his child as a commissioner? So if they say it's time for Shei Tinubu, is he us here? We will just talk. Mm -hmm. But it's as if there's a fair company already. For them to mute this idea, for them to even put it in the public space, it looks like it's going to happen. Did they endorse him in the last election cycle? No. All right. It looks like it's going to happen. And conversations are already on. Before you know it, they will just start putting it in our face. So, All right. Accept it already. <laughs> There's nothing you can a do dynasty. about it. Lagos. A dynasty. What do we call it? Has a been a formed. It has gone full circle. A, a Miloko dynasty <laughs> is already in Lagos. So let's stop well, deceiving right. ourselves. I'm a realist recall. Well, all right. I am hearing Nigeria Tunumbu and Sons Limited. Or Tunumbu Nigeria and Sons Limited. I'm also hearing that Tunumbu built Lagos from the roof not from the bottom to the top. I'm hearing that uh, Sheyi Tunubu would do better and that he's a vibrant, disciplined, and innovative person and a very kind person. I'm hearing that Tunubu is a mafia and that he understands politics of time and season. And um, Sheyi Tunubu will take over Lagos. I'm also hearing that um, when these people finish, even Ed Boy 
for secondary school go be from APC. Uh, I, I'm hearing uh, that Emilokon Abuja Tinumbu, Emilokon um, Lagos Sheyi, Emilokon Agbero Emsoluo Omo, um, welcome to the kingdom of dynasty. Well, if you don't understand what this is all about, let me break it down to those that are non Nigerians. But you know, many people are interested in what goes on in Nigeria. A lot of people had thought that Tinubu would not be president against all odds. Who did not combat President Tinubu? But there is one thing that Tinubu made use of. He made use of money, all that he had acquired over time. And this is a long time goal. That does not mean others do not have long term or long time goal or aspiration. Bola Metinubu fought hard. In fact, in those days, Bola Metinubu's health suffered. He was sweaty and pissing on himself. Like this one, if I lose it, I will RIP myself. Because he knows that he will not have any shot possible or even be able to touch that city in Aso Rock if he does not do it under the rule of Buhari. Now, Buhari wanting to appear as a man who is free and fair, decided to play a kind of game at that time to himself. If Bola Metunumbu can fight it to finish at the APC primaries, if he's able within APC to gain that vote, to become the president-elect, I mean, before the elections, to be the flag bearer for the party. He knew within himself, if he's able to do this, they call him the Jagaban. They said he knows how to use money and he knows how to press buttons. What did Bola Metunumbu do? Bola Metunumbu held on to the umpire. He knows that the umpire will be the decider of majority, meaning he will announce and the umpire can coordinate certain persons within the electoral uh, body, I mean, the formation. He knows that he needs to give this guy a lifetime and a continuous payment. That's one. Then two, Bola Metunumbu knew that he has opposition, and that opposition became tribal. Then second, we started seeing religion in it. Now, when you talk about Christianity, the Pentecostal, he had problems with the vice president, Usibanjo, who was then aspiring to be president of Nigeria, trying to push Bola Metunumbu out of the equation. Then we have Peter Obi. You all know the story. But as it is right now, um, you heard what uh, our guests have just said from Arise. Abati said his own and every other person said their own. Why did... A man who we, we know that he has always been uh, very much forthright. He says it and he pushes it hard. Why did he end up saying, if they say Sheyi Tunubu is president or governor, just take it as that. Because Lagos is their base. And there is no way that you can ever push Sheyi Tunubu out. It is Sheyi Tunubu's turn. This brings me back to the so-called prophecy oh god said i'm not quoting but we heard that a man before oh god a man before god they call the man of god a man before god said i see a family that will produce president and a governor well the wife of that man all of a sudden, is a deaconess in that church. And that church, they are big on billionaires in Nigeria. Regardless of how you got your billions, bring it all into the hand, hands of God. Bring it into the basket of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ wants it. Now, I'm not going to go deep into that. Maybe you know what I'm talking about or who you I'm talking about. So, it seems the prophecy is going to be fulfilled, sort of, because Bola Metunubu fought. Politics is not a joke. It's not for the weak heart. Politics is, in fact, it could be a do or die affair in certain crimes. But like when they know what they are there for and what they stand to loot when they get in there. 
Are you thinking Bo Bola Metinubu wants to be president so that he can loot more? Maybe. But Bola Metinubu wasn't really looking for money per se. What Bola Metinubu was looking for is to solidify the money that he had acquired in whatever way because he doesn't know anything can happen in the future. Have you seen any president in Nigeria or head of state that has been probed? None can be probed personally. It is part of the law in Nigeria. That immunity stays till RIP. So Bola Metinubu needs to. He doesn't want one day EFCC will stand up and begin to press button or one thing will be created. If you are to probe Bola Metinubu, then you will probe all heads of state. You will probe every one of them. Well, well, well. Will Sheyi Tunubu become president? Will Sheyi Tunubu become governor? Possibility. Once Sheyi Tunubu steps in, becomes governor, he will have to decide, should I be a senator? Or should I begin to press and push to become president of Nigeria. You think it's not possible? It is highly possible. The thing is this, Sheyi Tunumbu will be the president governor of Nigeria, Lagos State. You know what I mean? What I'm saying is that Sheyi, as the governor of Lagos State and father as president. Now, some people might use this as a prayer point. You know, Nigerians are very religious. They'll be like, oh my God, because that's never happened before. It has never happened before. President, general, governor. <laughs> and Lagos State is not like any other state. You see? So, <laughs> this Tinumbu man, some people, I repeat, will begin to use him as a point of reference or prayer point like, may God bring grace like how he gave to so-so and so president and governor. We are talking of 2027. Um, that's when um, <laughs> a lot will be happening. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my, my. Oh my, my. I mean, come on. Look at it. It's like they've already given up. Like, who is going to combat Sheyi Tunumbu come that year, 2027? Or whatever is it the man that they said you are not yoruba uh, you are yoruba your father is yoruba but you don't understand the culture you can't even speak the language you are you are you are you are you are you see that's one thing about politics that's one thing about politics the repetition by this dude chinedu who brought in the southeast flavor into the election back then it sounded or it looked like but not in lagos you cannot it's not possible that tribal sentiment will get in there and it's also important he had brought it in via his mom they started rounding up you know canvassing lobbying he was in lagos saying lagos is a cosmopolitan lagos is a a melting point. Lagos is a space where everybody has built together, giving stories of how daddy and mommy met. We are all Nigerians. Lagos is that. That doesn't work in a country such as Nigeria with multi-tribal flavor or sentiments. It doesn't work. So that's the part that he failed upon. And people will not forget. Social media really spread it around. I'm talking of Lagos now because there might be a battle for the soul of Lagos come that time. I don't know if someone else is going to come up, but if these two individuals, Chinedu and Sheyi, will be battling, it will be a tough one. I'm, I'm waiting to see what, what, what's going to happen. It will be uh, a, a, a real battlefield. Uh, it will be a real battlefield. It will be a real battlefield. Let, let us see how all of this will, like, because Chinedu too will be working behind the scene. He has said, I don't have a deep chest to take money from, and Sheyi Tunubu has a lot of money. And don't forget that they've been in control. They've been doing a lot of things. And <laughs> for his father to be president of Nigeria, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the worst administration of Tinubu will finally determine if his sons... And Nigerians, like I said, are very spiritual. 
uh, not spiritual, they are very religious. They might be like, hey, Tunumbu, your son will not come in. The God that destroyed this will destroy that. Let us just keep our fingers crossed. When I say cross, I mean, it's not like you're keeping your fingers crossed, not doing anything. What we are talking about is this. We have to realize, we have to look deep. We have to um, realize that power belongs to the people. Yes, uh, they, they have said that there's nothing anyone can do. They will just simply announce that uh, Sheyi Tunubu is the winner, regardless. But, you know, it gets to a point where you cannot fake it. If you fake it, there will be anarchy in the land. You know what I mean? But let us just uh, keep looking. Let us see the preparations back and forth. Let's see what and what is being done. Uh, I mean, the, the underground dealings. Because now they said uh, Sheyi Tunubu has been given the... Uh, you are going to be governor. Don't worry. After Songwolu, you will be the one to step in there as governor. And um, afterwards, your dad will be retiring as president. Then you too, you will step in as governor. Then we'll start looking at someone who is loyal. Uh, don't worry. Don't worry. You are blessed. <laughs> well, let, let us see how all of this will turn out to be. Uh, we'll see.